What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another live Monday night beer review here on the Beer Patrol. And tonight, I am joined by some guests that I won't introduce yet momentarily. But we will be reviewing two beers from the Trappist Brewery Rochefort. And we have their Rochefort 8. We have their Rochefort 10. Two classic beers that I believe all of us have had before. We'll see. And when I say all of us, who am I talking about? I'm, I'm, am I talking to myself? I am not. I am talking about a fellow beer tuber and a good friend of mine, someone who has been on my channel multiple times before, and that is none other than Nick Lowe, a.k.a. Maxwell Starr from Maxwell Starr's Beer Reviews. Nick, welcome back, and how are you doing, buddy? Hey, not doing too bad, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Always, because you're a classy individual. Speaking of classy individuals, we also have, all the way over the pond in the U.K., we have Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. Maybe it's Kent from Craig Beer Reviews. I don't know. You tell me. Maybe it's Greg. I have no idea. Nobody gets his name right, and I don't know why, but what's up? What's up, Craig or Greg or Kent? Oh, good. Cheers for having us. Um, it's definitely not Greg, so I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> and, it, and if it was Greg, you would be the better Greg. That's just how it comes down to. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cheers for having us on again. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, for sure. They, uh, both of these guys were on the um, the Chimay, uh We did the uh, red and blue, and Craig has been on for Elvis Juice, and I think I had Nick on for uh, we did a Bellwoods beer, uh, the Dulce du Leche one. I forget what that was, but uh, Satan's Broadsword was it? Yeah, yeah, from Bellwoods. Yep, that was the one. Uh, so anyway, you'll see these guys more and more because uh, you know the Monday Night Live beer reviews try to get beers that we can all can get, even people in New Brunswick which is a mm. beer wasteland of some sort. Um, but anyway... Well, compared to you, yeah. Yeah, compared to me, compared to Craig. Craig gets crazy beers that I can't even get. But anyway, uh, mm. so like I said, we're doing Roast for 8 and 10 before that, though I want to mention that if you do watch this back on the replay, in the in the description box, I will have timestamps for both of these reviews along with the Cuvée, a.k.a. the Cuvée, because we're going to Cuvée the shit out of both of these beers because that's what we do here. Um, so yeah, I usually try to get those... You know, timestamps work in about a couple hours after the show. So I know everybody doesn't have an hour, hour and a half to watch back a live review. So if you want to jump to one of the reviews, feel free. Um, also, if you're watching this live, we will be constantly monitoring comments, checking them out. If you've had either of these beers or you're drinking them right now, let us know what you think about them. Because like I said, both of these uh, beers have been enjoyed by us before. So, you know, let us know what you think. Um, and last but not least, next Monday, which is July 1st, which is what is it, Nick? What's July 1st? uh some special day in canada is it canada day it might be yeah so it's canada day i'm not doing a uh live stream not because i'm canadian but because i respect my fellow canadians plus i just i'm not gonna be around next week so the following week which is monday july 8th uh nick is going to be joining me once again and potentially other people who can get these two beers we're going to be taking a look at two beers from the boston beer company aka samuel adams we're we'll looking at their new england style ipa and sam 76 so uh yeah if you can grab both of those beers you want to drink along with us feel free other beer uh, beer tubers i'll be in contact with them hopefully we can have you know a decent panel on here maybe four or five people but yeah that's in two weeks so first i'll check the comments you guys want to crack open uh eight and start pouring it and whatnot feel free that'll be the first one we're reviewing so we have jake <clears throat> jake says knee who says you know i mean just call him jake so i will he says did someone say quote classy individual we did, Jake, and we're totally talking about you. Joe Gansel shows up, says, hi, all. What's up, Joe? How's it going? Uh, Paul, PA Brew News, great friend of ours, says, cheers, brother. Zzz, plural. He said brothers, not brother. Cheers, Paul. Um, Jake says, would the Kuvi be the 18 or the 9? Ooh, that's a good one. Do we call the Kuvi the 18 or the 9? I would think it's the 9, right, when you're mixing the two? You could go in the middle and say, like, what, was it 14? What? <laughs> Nothing. The hell are you talking, Dick? Are you already hammered? What What is even nope. happening? Well, I'm just saying halfway between 18 and, and 10. Oh, yeah, but you're saying this is the 8, this is the yeah. is the 10. You, you, you combine them and say 18, so, you go in between, say 9. So what's I half? Think. 9? Yeah. yeah, I suppose 9 would be a midway between. 9? 9? 9? 9? All right, settle down. Um, Eric Gilbert says, cheers, fools. What's up, Eric? And then uh, Jesse says uh, he's got the 76 and the Sam's New England style, so Jesse will be joining us if he wants nice. to. So, anyway, cracking this one open. I know you guys already did because you're fucking not reading comments. So mm -hmm. it all makes sense. And when do I ever read comments, too? That's true. I am the comment reader. So let's give it a pour here. Oh, wait, hang on. Label out. Label out. Shout out to Paul. Yeah. Look at that. He always goes label out, doesn't he? That's Paul's jam. 
because why not? So uh, this is classified as a Belgian strong dark ale. Um, and it comes in at, I want to say it's, is it 9.2%? Pretty sure it's 9.2, maybe 9.3. 9.2% alcohol by volume, 22 IBUs. Now, let's talk about the uh, dates of our bottles real quick so people have a little indication. I'll go first. Mine is Best Buy, uh, this, the eight that is, is Best Buy March 7th of 2023, which means they usually give five years, which means this was bottled in uh, March of 2018, March 7th. So we're talking about 15 months on my bottle. How about you, Nick? My bottle is older than that by a little bit. Uh, my best before date on here is uh, January 27th, 2020. So I'm super glad I got to this because I had less than a year to get to it before it would turn into a pumpkin. Um, oh, this uh, <laughs> this particular bottle, would, that would be, I think that this is from 2014, but it's, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but it's not that much older than the, uh, the uh, 10 that I have. So yeah, um, these came into NB Liquor here, uh, I think, early like spring 2015 and i bought a whole bunch because i was like oh my god trappist rockford to eight gotta have it and i still have a bunch nice um so yeah i i think i think nick's gonna have the older <laughs> bottle because i'd imagine imagine craig's gonna tell us but i'm just thinking this is probably gonna be the freshest so what do you got going on greg greg hey greg yeah what do you got um, going on greg great. okay yeah um 30th of january 2024. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so it's less than six months. Six months. Is, yeah. I mean, he's got the freshest one, which I knew. I mean, no. Yeah. Well, uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know until I just looked. So it's, I, I ordered it last week online with a few other bits. And yeah, pretty fresh. Yeah, I figured you would have it, you know, being closer to the source and whatnot. So it makes complete sense. All right. So uh, this poured out, what do you guys think color wise? Like deep mahogany? Yes. Yeah, deep mahogany. Hazy, yeah, well, well, maybe like a, like a slight brown ale kind of look to it. I yeah. guess it's like. the middle of it, I'd say it's yeah, it's a little bit like brown sure. mahogany. Yeah, it's yeah. maybe not as quite as red as like mahogany would be, but that's uh, that's very nice looking, yeah, like a super deep, like rust color, I would say, rusty, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I have a uh, about a two finger, finger and a half of just like a straight up like cream colored head, like almost tannish, but it just, I just say straight up cream. Yeah. Just off white. Just a slight kind of brown sort of brownish tannins in, in the uh, head, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's like straight up like creamy brown. Yep. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Uh, baby. Very, 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 very satisfying in, in its appearance. And I want to say on my camera specifically, it's a bit darker on camera than it is in real life. I, on camera, I'm just looking. It's like, wow, that actually looks kind of deep brown, but it's not that dark. So, hmm. Anyway, get a nose on it. Yeah, that smells freaking oh, yeah. delicious. Oh. Yeah. Damn. The spices are still there, even though this is fairly old. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So yours, I mean, that's the difference. Yours is, you know, fucking almost five years old, right? Four, four, four and a half years old. So, you know, you're talking about a old beer <laughs> and it's still, oh, spicy. Yeah. it's spicy. still spicy. There's loads of cinnamon yeah. clove coming off of that. And there's like, uh, very much like, like red grapes and, and, uh, and figs and dates and stuff like that coming right out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it has like what's that? Sorry. Like, oh, with, with with brown sugar. In. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a cream brew. It's like a burnt brown sugar edge yeah. to it. Almost. Just yeah. car caramelized sort of thing. Yeah, caramelized sugar. Like Demerara sugar, I think is the word I'm looking yeah. for. It's got that, that rich, yeah. dark sugar. Yeah, I couldn't pronounce that. Word, so. <laughs> dark. <laughs> yeah. The buzzwords <laughs> I learned from Terry K. A lot Demerara. of um, a lot of people talk when they talk about these beers and quads and Belgian strong darks and whatnot. Like, I, I get, I don't get it like exactly to a T, but like, you know, um, what you call it, the uh, fruitcake. That's what I'm kind of getting on this fruitcake. Like oh, yeah. you, you get the the darker, sweeter fruit component, but like a big bready, spicy, just like like you said, a caramelized sugar. I'd go with with with, with Craig said. Very car just has it's very it's very rich, but it's not like too sweet. It's it's more rich and decadent than it is just pure sugar on the note. Yeah, it's, it's there's weird. a slight kind of do doughiness to it as well, almost yeah. like yeah. Um, or maybe some cherries or something. Just I, to, I, yeah, I feel like red cherry. I, I totally get the whole fruitcake thing you're talking about, Joe. And it's weird that all of our beers, like what you guys are describing, smells pretty much exactly like what this one smells like. And but despite the age difference between all, 
Yeah, and, and for this being, you know, 15 months, it's not like super spicy from from the yeast esters, but it has like it still has a nice spiciness. Like I could you could say all spice or cinnamon or just, you know, whatever, clove, coriander, you could just name any spice. It just has like a generic spice like, to me. It's got this nice like apple pie kind of smell to it, yeah. too. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of saying more cinnamon yeah. than anything, because that's what I reminisce about. Like if you say apple pie, cinnamon is the key spice for me. So like I get, I get that. Yeah, yeah I'm getting that apple clove. pie spices. Apple, apple pie, yeah, clove. Um, like clove all spice and maybe. Um, are you getting? I mean, it's, it smells very kind of like warming, but not in an alcoholic, alcohol way sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's just. I think, I think it's just probably almost like the body, almost. I don't know. Like, like I said, it smells rich. It smells decadent. It smells deep. It smells complex. Yeah. It's like it's weird because a lot of times when I smell beers, I, I don't get like this is extremely complex. Like extremely complex. There's each time I go back, there's something else going on, or it, it becomes a little bit more cohesive. Shout out to Paul. It's just it's one of those one of these beers where it's just like you know why this is a classic. End of story, right? I mean, there's it's a classic, and just off the nose, you can tell it's a classic. So, anyway. I want to get into it because it's make my mouth water. So cheers, everybody. Thank you guys for cheers. Cheers. Show cheers. it up. Yeah. The hatch. Oh, yeah. I read a couple comments while we try to uh, figure mm. out what's happening. Mm. Um, Jake says he got both of these as well. So I believe he's drinking along. Redbeard shows up and says, what be going down, sexy boys? Now that I said that out loud, maybe I shouldn't have. Um mm. Jake says, down anymore. Uh, Jake says his says Best Buy November 15, 2022. Guess that means it's old. Yeah, that's uh, just under a couple years old, like one and a half years old. So. It's like a, it's a 2017 bottle, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, Rajay shows up and says, yo, 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 what's up, Rajay? Uh, everybody Cheers. says hi to one another, including Joe Gansel and everyone. All right, good stuff, boys. All right, so taste, we'll go. Craig, what are you, what are you picking out here? We'll go with you first. So you need more time. I mean, considering this is a six-month-old bottle, I'm getting very kind of little alcohol off this, which is pretty impressive for a 9.2% Belgian beer. Because my experience of Belgian beers, you get a bit of alcohol compared to all this like modern-day beer. Um, this is just so smooth. Yeah. I'm out, you know, it's just it's there's not one thing overshooting the other for me. It's just. It's so well kind of rounded and brown sugar. Like we, it's pretty much on the nose. It's just following through to the, to the taste. I find it's um, these trouble is with these beers. They're so Moorish, and I've been in bars where you, you've had a few of these, and you you just want more and more and more. And then oh shit, it's nine point two percent kind of thing. You know? <laughs> I, I fell into that trap a few times. Trappist, a few trappist, times. Trappist, yeah. trap. I mean, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there's a reason. Like when we did Chimay, and I think the prevailing thoughts for all of us what was like both of those, both the red and the blue, were just immensely drinkable and just extremely oh. smooth. And at the percentage, and this is kind of right in the same vein as that. It's like this yeah. is nine point two. You can tell it's a bigger beer. I get a chest warming, little bit of astringency on the palate. But it's still somehow just crazy smooth and just I just I, I could crush this bottle in ten or fifteen minutes easily, no questions asked. I don't want to though because I enjoy yeah. it, savor it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the things that's really impressing me the most about this is as I'm drinking this, like you would think that this would be a sipper. This is yeah. actually really quenching. Yeah, this yeah. is see the simply. I gotta be careful drinking this because not just because it's eight, eight, uh, nine point two percent. But because I want to save some for the Kuvi, yeah, I'll some for the gotta have some for the Kuvi later. Yep, I forgot. But that. I, I'm getting loads. Of it, it, it's super smooth. I mean, at the top of it, I'm getting like just like Craig says, so the smells are carrying off into the taste, but they lighten up at the back, and then it goes down like super creamy, super smooth, and super easy. Uh, with this almost, it's not so much like it's a wet, so, uh, wet base or something, but it's actually quite, uh, quite quenching and satisfying as it goes down. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite, quite spicy to boot. Yeah, quite correct. No, it's quite considering the ABV. It's almost like the body is quite soft. Yes. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's almost like pillowy soft, and it's like how is that pillowy soft at nine point two? Pillowy um, soft. Yeah, just it's just Sorry. it's really that's I, I think that's where you just know it's like 
world class. Yeah, it's well, it's an extremely world class, just well made world class beer. And I, I agree with you, uh, both of you, uh, Nick. What you mentioned is like, yeah, right up front, I'm hit with like some of those spicy yeast esters. But like, I get all the dark fruit and the stuff we're talking about—the bread, the caramel, the caramelized sugar, the you know, all the different fruits and whatnot. And a little bit of bubble gum too. Yeah, you, I mean that's the thing with 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 the yeast. You can uh, people are going to pick out different things. I'm not getting bubble gum per se, but I can definitely see how you are. But I think when you hit, you get the spice up front, and then all that fruit, and then it just finishes like you guys say, smooth. Um, it's relatively dry on the back end. It's not super dry thing, but it has a nice drying sensation to it, probably from the alcohol. Almost gives me the like a cinnamon dryness, even though there is no actual cinnamon here. It kind of gives me the perceived like cinnamon dryness. Um, and that's what makes it way more drinkable is that it, this is a sweeter beer. It's really not bitter at all, but it has a decent dryness that makes you want to drink more of it because now my, my mouth is kind of dry and I'm like, I want to go back in. But then you have to keep in mind it's 9.2%. You can't just sit here and and, and this is not a, this is a quaffable beer, but it shouldn't be, but it could be, but I'm not doing it that way. I'm just saying you could, you could take this down. You, I could, I could session this. They wouldn't be ideal in any way whatsoever, but he could do it. And um, yeah, I mean, you talk about the body too, uh, Craig. It's uh, one of those things where, I don't know, it just, it, it reminds me of all these New England style IPAs that are extremely like just the, you know, there's carbonation in here and you feel it, but then it's so like soft, smooth and creamy on the back end. And you're just like, wow, like, you know, it's just fluffy and pillowy and luscious. It's just insane. It's, it's, um, it's, the, Bel it's the Belgian haze almost, if you like. It's just, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Belgian haze. Maybe the other half. The half of haze, bro. Belgian home. Um, yeah, I will say the body for 9.2%. It's like, I'd say higher side of medium, lower side of full. I'm pretty, pretty happy with the body. It's not thin, mm, even though yeah. Paul would probably say it's thin. I would say it's a little thin, but I think it's because my bottle smoothed out a little bit much. Yeah, maybe, maybe just like higher side of medium body. Um, but I'm fine with it. I don't want a big, thick, chewy, viscous beer with this one. I, I prefer it, it enhances the drinkability being a bit a touch thin. So um, read comments and then you, we'll uh, figure out what we're going to rate, rate this bad boy. So we have uh, Jake says, holy crap, this is good. Yes, it is, Jake. Yeah, it's yes. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, and Jesse says, "Cheers to beer, tu beer tubers of the world." Damn it. Uh, Eric says, "Poured a high road brewing Bronin in Vermont IPA." Have you had that one before, Nick? Have you had the Bronin? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever had anything. Or is it high road? You said it was because the Bronin was like one of the first Vermont style IPAs or New England style IPAs that showed up in Ontario, I believe, and uh, people were going nuts about it. Chad and, all, and a lot of people, and I just haven't heard much about it since then. No, I don't think I ever. I, they didn't come out here, and nobody sent one for new, me from Ontario, so I never, never had it. Nice. Okay, me either. So we're in the same boat. So uh, let us know how it is, Eric. I remember that being uh, very well received by most Ontario craft beer drinkers. Uh, Redbeard says, "I've got a rather delicious raspberry sour from the PEI Brewing Company." Mm. Yeah, you sent a picture of it in one of the chats, and actually, I can get that here. I kind of. Might be something to do in the future. Do all reveal babies? Anyway, we'll yeah. talk about it later. And then uh, Jake says he loves raspberry sours. Redbeard says, as do I. And then Jesse says, I'll get these someday. So he's going to get the roach first at some point, according to Jesse. Oh, and yeah. you should, Jesse. Oh, yeah. It's well worth it. You, if you Definitely. haven't. I mean, it's just, it's these are, they're expensive in the States. I mean, I paid, I, I forgot. I, so we'll talk uh, price point in a couple minutes here. We'll rate them first. So Nick, rating out of five. Out of five, Nick. I know. Come on, I know you're with me. Out of five, Craig does out of ten, but he does prefer to five. So I think we're good here. But out of five, I think for one review, one review only that uh, Craig could do it out of five. But uh, as for me, I like it. Um, I think maybe the uh, the age it's getting a little on the uh, past due side as far as aging it too long. Probably the sweet spot if you were to drink this around three years old. Um, at four, what is it? Uh, four and a half. Twenty fourteen. So it's yeah, it's. About five years old this year at the end of this year beginning of next year four and a half years old. whatever so this is this is getting to the point where it's it's a little past its prime i find it is thinning a little bit and there's a slight amount it's a very slight amount of oxidation in it but otherwise very well made very delicious and very deceptively drinking beer and i would have to give that a four out of five all right four out of five for nick uh how about you uh, craig oh it's just um <laughs> I don't know. This is uh, this is so good. Um, I can just picture myself sitting in a in a Belgian square, 
you know, looking out over a market or something and just just relaxing and chilling out with this sort of thing um, and having a thoroughly, thoroughly good time with it, I'd say, because I probably have more than one. Um, this is, for me, it's what is, I'd say it's world class. It's not, it's not quite to the, uh, the tens or the fives, if you like, but it, 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 for me, this is not too far off. Um, I'm going to give this a 4.5 or a 9 out of 10. So I think it's, uh, my, I don't know if that's to do with the age of it um, compared to Nick's score. I don't know. Um, or it might be our, our own different palettes or whatever, but, but yeah, I, I think this is um, different baby palette. It's damn good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Nick's, Nick's is clearly uh, a baby palette. Shut up. But I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I've not had the eight for, or, or I can't remember. Mm. Um, it, it's the first time since I'm untapped anyway, but I've had it before um, in the two, early 2000s, mid 2000s. I used to drink a lot of these all the time. So, um, yeah, it's just fantastic. It's just everything you want. I'm getting a little more, bit more of a, a, a kind of a date. In, you know, fruit in it now. Uh, maybe a bit of fig date. You know, more dark fruits are starting to come through now. Maybe it's warmed up or come out of the bottle and it's it's had a chance to breathe or, or whatever it is. But yeah, it's just for me, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all I'm gonna have to say real quick is co-signed because uh, yeah, this is totally a four point five out of five for me. This was the that was the original score. I, I actually had to look on Beer Advocate when I used to rate like you know put my beers on Beer Advocate because. I have not had this since I joined on tap 2013 was the first time I started posting. I think I joined in like 2012, then start posting 13. So I've never uh, checked it in. Uh, but my thing here coming into this, and I didn't mention it. I, for me personally, always enjoyed this slightly more than the 10, which is part of the reason I want to do both of these tonight. And this harkens back to what I originally thought about it. It's a great, it's a great Belgian strong dark ale. It just is. Um, if you just go with that, classification stylistically like this is one of the best in the style for me i can't really think of any other like this is better than the chamay that we had uh from the, the was it the blue that's the same i think the style i think it's better than that yeah. um and it's just it's really good now nick again this is where i think the ages come into play like you said craig and, and nick okay. and nick's drinking a four and a half year old bottle i'm drinking one that's just over a year old you're drinking one six months old i think it it, it may have lost a little bit for nick um, you know, yeah, like, no, I'm, that's exactly what I'm thinking is that it's lost a little bit due to the age. Sorry, Joe. No, it's fine. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, I feel like I don't, I haven't, I don't think I've had this close to five years. I've had it a couple years old. I just like what this brings to the table and, um, and yeah, I've always liked it and I'm really, really curious to see when we get into the 10 momentarily, how it's going to compare drinking it one after another. Maybe I will like the 10 more. Maybe I'll still like this one more based on my memory of us doing it on a beer, beer analysis 101, Nick, uh, whatever, about six months ago. I think they're very similar for me in different ways, just like as far as score goes. Um, but yeah, four out of five. I mean, or sorry, 4.5 out of five. I mean, that that's that's what this beer deserves to me. It's a world-class beer within the style and just a delicious beer overall. So um, yeah, I'm going to put this to the side. Yeah, six months ago, uh, the beer analysis we did before Rochefort 10 was uh, 10 months ago. Holy shit. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Because that yeah. was our one, this plugging yeah. here, that was our one year anniversary that we did 10 months ago, which means in mm -hmm. this coming August, we got another two year anniversary episode coming on. So stay tuned, et cetera. Um, I, can't, I can't remember, remember what all these boys and girls. Yeah, I can't remember what I rated the 10 uh, when we done that. So, which would be great just to compare. I, I don't, mind you, that was an older bottle. A friend gave me that. And I don't know, we'll get into this in a minute, but. What, how much did you pay for your oh, yeah. eight? Look at Craig. Look at Craig bringing awesomeness to the panel right here. This is what I forgot. I was like, we're going to do it. And then I forgot. Probably the alcohol. I paid for the eight, I believe it was $6.19 American for this 330 milliliter bottle. That's pretty good. I'd, I'd say for an import, that's not a bad price. I believe Nick said he paid seven forty nine Canadian for the air. That's or he didn't pay. If that. I were to buy one now, it would be six ninety nine Canadian. And I think when I bought it four years ago, this thing was, I want to say under five dollars, but I don't remember. Okay, and I know in Ontario, I think these go for sub four dollars Canadian, like right around four dollars Canadian, which is insane value. Okay, that's insane. That's American. That's like three dollars a bottle, so like half the price I paid. 
how about you, Craig? What did you uh, would you would you pay for? Excluding well, the shipping, I, I, know you at, or did you get free shipping? I, I no, I paid the shipping, uh, but then yeah, it worked out a pound. I because I, I got I had a code discount code. I used that, so I paid literally a shipping for these beers, which is great. Wow. Um, four pound ten a bottle. Four pound ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably in the five mid fives American. So it's close to what I paid. Yeah, here, here's the prices oh, of yeah. Rochefort in Quebec. Yeah. So yeah, it was five fifty for a ten at four eighty for an eight. That's great. That's great. And 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 this is why I've said so many times on beer analysis on here, like the Canadian prices for the Belgian imports are fucking sick. Like it's it makes me nauseous. It does uh, in a great way. Like I I the re reason why I bought the Rodenbach caricature rouge four bottles of it it was eight dollars seventy five cents to seven fifty. That beer's like twenty plus dollars here. So. Always get a good deal in Canada. Always buy the Belgians because you guys shit. Sound like bandits. Um, read the comments, and then if you guys want to crack this, uh, the the Roche for uh, ten open. Go ahead, I will do so momentarily. Uh, do it now. Do it now. Um, it gives this a solid four point two five out of five, which is a respectable score. I, I definitely see that. Um, Eric says it's tasty, but not quite the Zodiac level from Omnipolo. He's saying that the Bronin he doesn't enjoy as much as the Omnipolo uh, Zodiac, which I think he's crushed a bunch for, or a, bu a bunch. Like he went nuts over that beer. And he also says the Roche for eight is four ninety nine for him. So, it's about, like I said, about three seventy five four dollars a bottle of American, which is a good deal. Redbeard says I think I had this beer a while ago before my palate changed. I may have thought it was the devil. Of course, Redbeard is known for not really enjoying Belgian style beers, although he is turning the corner. Uh, Lee shows up and says, I see a bunch of traps on this panel right now. Huh. Not tramps. I don't no, know. Not tramps. Traps. <laughs> <laughs> Redbeard says, hey, Lee, it was the 10 I had a while back. It tried to kill me. Well, yeah, uh, that's a delicious beer. So Redbeard, someday you'll enjoy it. Uh, Lee then says hello to Rib. He just says hello, Rib. Jake says, <laughs> uh, for me, the 8 was 8 bucks and the 10 was 9. Uh, did you get 330, liter, uh, 330 milliliter bottles, Jake, or did you get the bigger bottles? Um, then Redbeard says four dollars fifty cents a bottle for the ten or the eight LCB. Again, good value. Eric Gilbert says it was four ten dollar or four dollars and ten cents at the LCB. I don't know what you're saying, Eric. Is that the uh, ten? <laughs> um, and Rod says discount code equals Rod J deals. Is that what you entered in, Craig? Fifteen <laughs> percent. Uh, so it almost paid for shipping. Yep, that's fucking pretty good. Eric says he's going off memory, so they must have uh, raised the price forty cents in Canada. Uh, Jesse says if I could find them, they probably have to charge me at least fifteen dollars a piece, probably for the seven fifties. They would be in that range, honestly, uh, Jesse. And then Jake, last comment says I only got the eleven point two fluid ounce bottles, which is what I think we all have, right? Mm -hmm. Three thirty mil. Three thirty mil. Yeah, which Both is that. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's, that's a standard standard European size. Yep. I think it's eleven point eleven point five fluid ounces, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's eleven point two. Okay, yeah. All right. So um a little bit about this one. The Roche 10 is a Belgian quad. It uh, comes in at eleven point three percent alcohol by volume and uh, twenty seven IBUs. And the date on my bottle is August 28th of 2018, which means my bottle is just under right approximately 10 months old, we'll say. That's what my bottle is. How about you, Nick? My bottle is also going to be the oldest here because it's even older than my eight. This uh, has an expiry date of uh, December 24th, so Christmas Eve of 2019. So I'm glad I got to this because uh, by Christmas, not even six months away, this would have been spoiled beyond all recognition. Um, just instantly at midnight. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Just, I've been watching. Nick is joking. It doesn't just instantly smile. Yeah. Because some people, hey, Mike, some people are like, hey, you can't... Some people might take that seriously. People yeah. will take me yeah. seriously. I mean... Well, nobody does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a late 2014 bottle. Like, this is a 15 bottle of 8. This is a 14 bottle of 10. So, they, But they're really a month apart. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So you got, you're got you going to have the oldest bottle because I'd imagine Craig's going to have a relative yeah. special one, right, Craig? Yeah, it's fresh. Uh, you um, it's it's April the thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Jesus! Wow, it's like a couple months old. It's like yeah. come on, April three. It's not even two months old. Jeez. Right? Yeah. yeah. Freshy. Yeah. If I ever saw yeah. a Rochefort or a Chimay or Saint Bernard or anything that was like two months old, I think I'd fucking probably just kill over. Like I maybe I'd instantly review it right in the store, just be cracking it open. <laughs> Super fresh. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's your yeah, premier yeah, that's, interest that's, that. That's um, that's uh, which is because I, I buy these blind online, so I could have gone down the road, but I don't. You know, I would end up paying probably about two or three pound more per bottle. So no, um, yeah, that's not ideal. And I, I got like a bunch of glasses. I've got four glasses that were really that reduced to clear, like one pound fifty for a, a Bernardus, one pound fifty for a La Trap, and it's like, yeah, let's 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 bump this up a bit and make it worth it. And yeah, all right, we're gonna just to settle down, Craig J from Kent Beer Ventures. You set it to just, just for a glass, just just saying, yeah. All right, it's, so it's not the right, it's not it's not the right glassware, but it'll do. No, neither is mine, but it doesn't matter, right? So, um, drink it out, just drink it out, you're good to go. You don't need hashtag problem. You don't need hashtag problem. You don't need hashtag. All right, anyway. Um, so, uh, look, it, this definitely looks darker, without question, than than the date uh, yeah. for me. This is like straight on, like a dark brown. This is like a deep dark mahogany. Uh, yeah. Nick, are you there? You just holding out? Yeah. But yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is more more of a richer mahogany, almost like uh, like deep brown. Yeah, and the head color is pretty pretty similar, slightly slightly darker, I think, than the ape. Pretty similar for me. Yeah, I would agree. All right, noses. It smells fucking awesome. It smells better than the eight. I'm just gonna say that right now for me. Oh Jesus! Yeah, it smells better. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about in terms of they liking the eight better than the ten, but based on aroma, I'm probably wrong. Hashtag baby pallet back in 2012. I almost, I almost feel like mine, the aroma's not as powerful as the eight is, but age. I'm, I'm getting more pleasing. Like, like you still get the cinnamon, you still get these these dark fruits and brown sugars that they're richer and deeper. It smells, it's now, it smells like the fruit cake that I got from the eight, but it smells just better, more intense, but not intense in like, like the spice is kicking my ass or something, just more intensive, like there's more sweetness, there's more breadiness, there's just more of everything, in a good, in the best way possible. Yeah, this is, this is dynamite. Definitely smells sweeter though. It, it definitely smells sweeter to me. Yeah, it's almost like sweeter, deeper, and richer. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely yeah. getting more of that caramelized sugar, that demerara sugar that you were talking about, like things in Things of that nature, as opposed to yeah, like they're, they're um, rich, unfinished, like uh, black strap molasses kind of thing. Yeah, it has a complexity to the sugar. It's not just yeah. it's sweet, just like here's your you know cane sugar, and you're just that's it, right? Like just pure sugar. No, this has this has layers and nuances of mm. the sugar component. God, that sounds so protected. Un unfinished raw sugar, basically. Yeah. It, oh. How about you, Craig? I'm, I'm you getting a. Um... I'm getting a lot more darker fruits, like proper, rich, on kind of figs, dates, raisins, that kind of thing. Mm. But I'm also getting, I'm also getting a lot more, as you'd expect, it being two months old. Lots more alcohol. Yeah, yeah. There's lots yeah. of, there's, it's very, very kind of fumey. This one, anyway. Mm. You're getting like, the vapors. You're getting the vapors. Oh, my lord! My lord! My lord. lord. Yeah, the, the nose is getting the vapor up, baby. Vapor, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting those. Like as you were saying, I get those uh, the 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 D, like figs, dates, um, like uh, uh, what was the last one you said? Raisins. Raisins. Yeah. That's it. But I don't get yeah. the big red grape note that I got on the. Uh, the it's not as bright. It doesn't come off as like uh, as as bright or apple pie spice as you would get with the eight. Yeah. yeah, this smells. This for some reason smells better than when we did it on beer analysis. Mm -hmm. Like it smells fucking just. I want to drink it, and we're going to right now. It smells jizzed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. What are you? All right. Right. All right, Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Come, come now. Cheers. Oh my god, for fuck's sake! Guess this is a PG stream, except for oh, there it is. Boom. Boom. Holy shit. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I know you guys are just, I, uh, you know, Nick's fucking orgasming. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like he's flipping out over here. There um, it is. Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's tripoding out over there. Oh, come on. <laughs> I just almost fucking spit roast fruit tent all over my fucking Yeti and my computer. That would have been problematic. Um, 
I for me, okay, so I'll go first because you guys are having different, uh, you know, yeah, I think you're a little bit different than what I'm thinking right now, just based on your reactions. Don't get me wrong, this is fucking delicious. And it's not, I can't say it's not. The nose for me was better than the taste. Like the the taste to me, like the nose was just seriously, nose was five out of five. It was just delectable. It was just amazing. The aromatics were out of this world. The taste, however, is like the nose dialed down about half maybe like dialed down 25% for me personally. I'm getting everything I got in the nose. It's just muted a bit. It's still delicious though. Um, for me, it's a lot drier than the eight. It's sweet. It's sweeter, but somehow drier. So I think with the bigger alcohol, you're getting more, I'm getting more of the dryness, but I'm also getting a big blast of sweetness up front and all of that, that caramel, that caramelized sugar, the demerara sugar, the, the big, rich layered complex sugar notes i'm getting the fruit you guys are talking about all the different you can just name whatever all the dark fruits you're probably right it um has a bigger body which you'd expect from something that's two percent higher and uh i think it's just as smooth as the eight like it's i mean i remember drinking this one on beer analysis 101 the smoothness as craig talked about earlier about all these belgian beers just being just extremely smooth yeah this one fits the bill um i don't know if i like it more than the eight i don't know if i like how I feel right now. I'm going to have to drink out a little bit. So Nick, wh what are you thinking? Good, sir. What I'm thinking is that for the moment I take first, take a see. I, I almost found like the aroma. Like I said, what the aroma wasn't as powerful as the sip that I got. I'm like almost like complete opposite of you. As soon as I took a drink of this, it was like a punch in the face of flavor. I'm like, Oh yeah. And it's like, this is the Drosh for 10 that I remember. And I mean, get, it, it is an aged bottle at this age. It is probably a Asus Prime. It does come off maybe a bit thinner than I do remember. But, oh, my God, this is solid and flavorful. You get, it's spicy. You get, like, lots of little cinnamon. It's loaded with, like, like like rough, like, brown sugar and demerara sugar. It's got the, the, the figs, dates, whatever, all in there. And this nice, mellow as fuck kind of smooth drinking experience with slight warming quality in the back. But it's also... Also a little on the lighter side, like maybe I don't want to say it's ox it, it hasn't oxidized quite as much as like the other one, but there's a trace amount of it is coming off slightly thin, but it, I gotta say that is amazing. And that 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 lives up with the the twenty fourteen bottle I drank last year because when I did beer in the beer analysis one oh one I did a drink a seventeen on air and a fourteen. And this is what I remember about the fourteen. That's fair. That's fair. Um, and I and I could tell that right from your first reaction. Clearly, yeah, I was like, Aww. yeah, yeah, you're, like, you're orgasming. No big deal. Happens. Uh, just usually not on my fucking live streams, but it happens anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Craig, what what do you think, buddy? Because you had a similar reaction, maybe not as <laughs> as boisterous yeah. as, as some individuals, but uh, you know, it was it was a reaction. No, I can I, I can do it silently. Um, <laughs> it it was just <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> don't though so, don't do not uh, never mind take that back um <laughs> say what <laughs> no, no. well it, it's got a nice the more i'm drink, the more i'm drinking it and it's probably because i've now drunk it it's I'm, the, the alcohol seems to have dropped off a bit i know it's probably i'm, I'm you know it's acclimatizing and it's coming out through the nose the alcohol and coming in through those you don't you know you don't get it so much um the body is, 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 I'd say, uh, probably the lower end of, me, of, a, of a full body, I'd say. Um, it's a little bit more of everything than the eight, with added added bits and pieces. Just um, I'm always getting like a slight kind of, I don't know if it's maybe cacao. Yes. Not nib, not nibs, but yeah. I, I, or some, nibs. something like that, I don't know. Um, it, it, it to me to, to just butt in real quick. Yeah, no, I, I I didn't mention that, but I'm getting something that's very reminiscent of a super dark chocolatey, like almost oh. like you say cacao nibs with something that is reminiscent of chocolate, but it's not a sweet chocolate. It's almost like cocoa powder yeah. or something like that. It's not. Yeah, not sweet. yeah, I'll give it that. Or a creamy, creamy milky chocolate. I don't know. Like the, the powdered chocolate milk kind of stuff that you put in your milk to to make a uh, chocolate milk, like the powdered stuff instead of the. Uh, the liquid yeah way higher quality though way higher quality okay sure <laughs> yeah um <Whatever. laughs> i i mean i i drink that too i'm just saying way higher quality but but yeah it's just i don't know it's just 
is beautiful. Just very creamy, smooth almost. Um, the dark fruits we've all mentioned. It's just a very more, a much more of a kind of, um, it's obviously that it's got the more body as well. Which just to lift it up a little bit. And, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's fresh. This one, so. Just um, rub it in a little bit more, Craig. No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> is it going to vary with, with Nick's or yours? I don't know. It's, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? Unless you've got all the glasses lined up and, you know. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I see where you guys are coming from. And while, while Nick was, um, you know, breaking down what he was tasting and whatnot, I actually drank both of them side by side, took a sip of each. And right from the get go, the thing that I can tell, and, and, and I mean, you guys can obviously do it too because you each have a glass of it. Uh, the body is, yeah, it's bigger. If, if if the eight is higher side and medium, this is at the very least lower side of full, maybe medium full. It definitely has a bigger body to it. Um, mm. The one thing that I'm getting is that everything for me seems to be richer in the 10, but I like the flavors in the eight more. For me personally, like I'm, I dug what was in the eight more than the 10, but I, I will give the 10, I think is more flavorful, if that makes any sense. More flavor in the 10, I prefer the flavors in the eight for me personally. And that's kind of what I remember for me personally drinking these two and what I enjoyed more from the eight than the 10 was for me, it just lined up more on a personal level flavor wise. And now drinking them side by side, I'm happy to report that my palate, although extremely stupid to this day, does not deceive me based on something that I had seven, eight years ago. And I still think I slightly enjoy the eight more uh, just from an overall drinking experience. If we're just going to say, what one would you just grab to drink? I still think I like the eight more. And I know I'm in the minority in the vast minority. I'd imagine more often than not, people will pick the 10 over the eight all day. For me, I just like the eight more just, that's where I stand. Um, but like what you guys are saying about the 10 is like spot on. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's super rich. It's super complex. And yeah, I would, I would say that what you're like, it's almost, these two beers uh, comes down to almost personal preference of what one really strikes your fancy better. Oh, that's I mean, good. I don't even can know. say your palate stew for, for like in the eight over the 10. I like the 10 over the eight, mm -hmm. but these beers are both extremely well made and very tasty for what they are. Uh, they, sure. you could easily like one over the other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, another thing you've got to think of, the, they are two different styles of Belgian oh, yeah. beer as well. So, I mean, it, they're, they're both, they're both, really damn good i mean i don't know it's just like i say it's minute preferences there's not much in it i wouldn't say yeah um, for another, sure. another thing i'm picking up another thing i'm picking up in this is almost like a, a blood orange slight kind of citriness it's definitely a dark i'd say it's more of a stronger orange i don't know perhaps i'm just a little bit it's not there's so much other things going on there's a like a biscuity malt thing coming through now on this as it opens up, it definitely changes. Um, I, yeah. I see where you're going with that, like orange component, getting almost like a slight sharp, slightly acidic, almost like pithy or peel of the orange more than anything for me. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's not just a not. It's I'd say more. I'd say a darker a blood orange sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's dif it's difficult with all these dark kind of fruit esters that you're picking up and stuff. It's I don't know. I, know, I, I will give the 10 that it is more complex than the eight based on the taste. It, it definitely is. Um, and I think this is a beer you could, you know, sit down, drink a bottle or two and probably taste, you know, 20, 30 different things while it opens up and changes temperatures. I forgot to mention, but I think we all drank the beer is pretty much not straight room temperature, but cellar temperature, probably at the very least for most of us. Um, I mean, mine were out of the fridge for like, you know, by the time I cracked them open, like 45 minutes and uh, the 10 was well over an hour or so appropriate temperatures for what you're trying to pick out flavors from anyway. Um, but anyway, I'll go to ratings. You guys think about uh, your score for this one as I read the ratings, baby. Let me read these ratings real quick. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, no, 4.99 is his rating for the eight sons, and the 10 is a 4.98. So Eric actually agrees with me, which I did not think anybody else would. So he's saying he slightly prefers the eight to the 10. By point zero one, or is point zero one? Yeah, that's 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 crazy, awesome. Um, uh, Eric says when your uh, the beer expires, it'll be like a rotten eggs right at midnight. 
Nick. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Bumpy says Joe's going to give it a high five, and then he does the high five and the peace symbol. You know, dad jokes for days. Hashtag dad jokes for Jesse all day long. Never, never <laughs> fails. Jake says, yeah, the color difference is definitely noticeable. Yeah, it's definitely darker, both the head and the body of the of the 10, but you would expect that being a quad and 2% higher in ABV and probably more malts being used and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, put the, here, um, start talking, Greg. I don't, I don't want to present you in case it fucks up. No, 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 just there you go. Yep, you can. way around it is the darker ones, the second one. So yep, yeah, you can see the difference. Definitely darker for sure. Um, uh, Eric, here. Yeah. Wow, you got it too. No, no, I mean, like mine, it's going to be the same thing. Like, you can see the slight, this is a little bit darker, but not much on my screen. But in real life, honestly, like, it's just a touch darker. It's just definitely darker, but not like crazy dark. Um, yeah. Eric says, only quad I would give a full 5-4 is Strafe uh, Hendrik um, 11 degree. That's the only one he would give a 5 for a quad. Okay. Fair enough, Eric. Uh, he sa- uh, Jake says, is that disappointment I see, Joe? Oh, when I, when I taste it? No, I just, it was honestly, if you ever have tasted something and the memories start coming flooding back of like how you remember it, so when I tasted the 10 after reviewing or just drinking the eight and giving it a review, my mind to me was like, this is exactly how I remember. I never did them side by side, but this is exactly how I remembered it being like the 10 amazing, but I still prefer the eight. And when I t- took that first sip or two of the 10, I was just like in my mind processing, right, Paul processing. I was just sitting there going, you know, I, yeah, this is exactly like, I don't know. My brain was trying to remember the memories came flooding back and I just wasn't disappointed as much as just like, yeah, this is, this is kind of what I remember. So, uh, earth says the 10 reminds me of that rack of various jams at a hole in the wall restaurant. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. It is interesting. Earth, earth shows up too. shout out to earth. Uh, he's the entire fucking planet. Jake says, I think the eight and 10 are on par with one another. And there you go. So maybe I'm not in the minority. Maybe I, you know, I just, I, you know, I just, I, I tried to, the reason why I really did these two is a, because they're fucking great beers. Okay. B I can invite friends, other beer tubers like uh, Craig, like Nick to come on and we have a great time doing it. And then C, I remember liking the eight more than the 10. Most people like the 10 more than three. I haven't had the eight in about seven or eight years. I was like, let's do it. So here we are. And uh, I think it was a success. So we'll go ratings on the 10 here. We'll start with Craig. What do you got rating wise out of, out of five? I know, I know you know it's out of five, but it's still out of five, even though you know it still is. Um, I just had a sip of the eight. Um, I just think the drinkability is probably edges it for the eight. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you go to this thing and it's like, this is more of a like, yeah, proper chill out. If I smoke cigars, I'd have one with this kind of thing. Um, maybe a like a beef stroganoff and stuff, and you know, just real chill out and yeah. Maybe maybe some of you want more punch and cheeses, baby, like the gargantola and the blue cheeses, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Bit a bit of venison or something like that. Go with this. Baby, Quite three more gaming well, meat, baby. Medicine. And, and baby, kangaroo, yeah. baby, what's up? Nigga, you said most kangaroo, baby. Most, yeah, something like that. Most koala but, um, bear. It's, um, it's great. The drink, I, I'd say that the drinkability is more, is better, I'd say, than the eight. Um, but then it's two different styles. I'm still going to, I'm still giving this a, a 9 out of 10 or a 4.5. I think I'd say they're on a par. Um, there was a little bit of alcohol stringency at first, and that that slowly um, evaporated on my, you know, on my palate, and I was enjoying it more. When I first tried it, I thought, "Oh, that's that's big, boozy, monstrous, dark fruit kind of thing," you know. Um, but it's just it's calmed down a bit now. As it's a bit of air's got to it, and yeah, proper proper enjoying it. It's definitely a sipper. It's more of a sipper than the eight. The eight is just like, yeah, you're in trouble with that. But with this one, uh, maybe it's because it's this fresh. Um, it, it kind of stops you a little bit more of being, is it, 11 point free. So uh, you respect it a little bit more. And yeah. Yeah. I, I, do, but, yeah. So 4.5, also yeah. with you. But your preference, if yeah. you had to choose one, it would be the 10 slightly, is what you're saying? 
<sighs> I know there's one of them tiles and whatnot, but I'm just saying if you had to pick one, what would you go with? <sighs> I'd probably go with the 10, yeah. For, it, it's, just, it's, just, it's just my personal preference, but I'll, I'd be quite happy with I'd, I'd be happy with either. If they're like, oh, damn, they've only got the eight, I'll be like, great. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not the end of the world, yeah, is so. it? You know? <laughs> Get the eight. Yeah, that, for sure. I, yeah, that's the thing. You're, 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 it's, it's, I mean, negligent. What, what, like, I mean, like, very, very, very small, minute difference as far as like what yeah. I would pick as well. All right. So, yeah. uh, 4.5 out of five for both beers from, um, Craig. He considers them world class, and I think we all pretty much do. Um, Nick, so rating on the uh, on the ten. On the ten, yeah. Um, I I tend to agree with much what uh, what Craig was talking about. Where um, I find that the eight is definitely more drinkable, but I think that the ten is much more flavorful when it comes to uh, comes to the like the the punch in the mouth the flavor. This is a this is definitely a sipper. Uh, compared yeah. to this one here, where it just seems to go down so easy and smooth. Yeah. Which, you know, that that's great for this one. And again, like you were saying, if I were to walk into a place that had both of these on tap, or well, not that you would have this on tap, you'd probably have this on bottles. But if you had both of these available for purchase for beer, it's like, oh, we don't have the 10, we have the 8. I'm like, yeah, I'll get the 8. Just go ahead and then do it. But when it comes to this one, the 10, like, when you consider these things, uh, at least for my prices, they're like 7 bucks a bottle. Um, I don't know if I'd want something so much that's over too quick, but one that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy. I mean, if I'm going to drink one, I'm going to get my money's worth. And I like this one the best. I like the 10 the best of the two. I mean, I still wish I had the opportunity to go out and buy like six more bottles of these and age them longer because, well, not that I would want to age them longer than the four and a half years that I've, I've aged them now, but I mean, at, at the same time. Would you like a lead with the Chimay's where he did one one every year? Well, I thought that that was a cool thing, what Lee did with the Chimay's. Um, yeah. Doing something like that would be cool, I think. It, it was more of the thought that like I'd love to have like like six or eight of these stuffed away so that every couple of months I could take one out and enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. Rather than, you know, just take and drink them at five years old. <laughs> yeah. So rating? What was your rating? Uh solid four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I'm pretty much almost <clears throat> on par with what Craig thinks of it, but just slightly leaning towards the eight. So I'd give this I know when we did the beer analysis one on one, I believe I gave this a nine out of ten. And which is a 4.5 out of five on my scale, which is what I'm giving it. And I think I gave it stylistically a 9.75 perhaps or a 9.5 stylistically. And I still keep that. I think this is, this is my, as far as I know, like I've had vest letter in 12 and I think I like that more than this. I do think that has a lot of, you know, just because it's harder to get. Therefore it's hype. Therefore everyone, I, I mean, doing a blind taste test between the St. Bernard, St. Bernard's app 12, this and the vest letter in 12, I think it'd be, be tough to, to honestly pick like a superior beer, but this is a world-class quad. I don't think there's really no argument against this one saying it isn't a world-class quad. I've never heard anyone be like, Oh, it's not world-class. Cause it totally is. I mean, you, you talk about quad. This is the quintessential quad. Uh, so stylistically, yeah, it's still, you know, very high, but, um, like if, if I was to, you know, like again, pick one of them, I'd pick the eight. I'd give like that eight, a 4.55. I'd give this a 4.5, but I would never turn either of these down. I think mm. the um I think what Nick said about well, I think both of you said it, but the 10 is a more of a of a um like sipper. Uh, uh, sit there, think think about what you're drinking, think about the complexities, sit down, watch a show over the course of an hour, hour and a half, whatever, and just you know, enjoy it. And I think the eight, even though it is nine point one percent, is a I don't want to say crusher. I can't say it's crushable. But it almost is crushable. If you if there's such thing as a nine point two percent crushable beer, Rocher Day's kind of right there. I could have drank that entire fucking thing, like I said, 10, 15 minutes, and no questions asked. I probably, could, I probably could have drank that in less than ten yeah, fifteen minutes. Like, it was like, going so now yeah. so easy. I had to stop. Yeah, I had to stop and put it to the side because we got to do the coovy. But like that is the definition <laughs> of a crusher, even though it's not a crusher. Uh, so yeah, I mean. What's that, Craig? I was going to say, was going to say the ten is all, the, almost a safer beer to drink. Yeah, because yeah, you kind of know there's a bit more of everything, alcohol, etc. Um, yeah. The only the only yeah, negative that, I got to say for the eight is that it's almost you don't want to drink it too quick because it'd be over too fast. Yeah, 
I, I do want to mention though, Craig, you talked about the, the, the alcohol. I didn't get a ton of alcohol on, on the 10. Um, it's obviously not two under two months old, uh, but I, it did drink, a, had a little bit more alcohol than the eight, which is expected from a beer. That's a mm. little bit bigger, yeah. uh, but neither of them are like boozy per se for me um, at this point, maybe yeah, I fresh. Think, yeah. I could yeah. see it. I could see it. When I first, when I first owned it, it was like, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Aroma taste. And then it, it, it's, it's warmed up a little bit more got used to it yeah just, let's get four more kind of thing you know it's, even though you're going to be in trouble but it's just it's just one of them beers it's just like yeah for sure all right so to wrap up craig gave them both a 4.5 out of 5 slight preference to the 10 if you had to have one uh nick gave the 10 a 4.5 and the 8 a 4 i gave them both 4.5s with a slight preference to the 8 so you have a little bit of a different overall opinion and again you're coming from uh an angle where we all had different age bottles. Uh, Nick's significantly older than all of ours, and Craig's significantly fresher than all uh, than all of ours. So you get, I think, different aspects from us because we're not all drinking the same beer with the same bottled on date. So you're going to get varying opinions, just how it is. What? Uh, what? Sorry, what did you pay for the ten? Uh, six forty nine. Um, so the eight was six nineteen. The ten was only thirty cents uh, more expensive. So. Right, okay. How about you guys? Was it slightly more? If I were to buy, no, the ten. The ten. What was the ten? I, I, Nick, the ten. The price. Uh when I bought it, I don't remember how much exactly how much I paid. I think it was around five. Might have been five bucks, maybe four something. But today, if I were to go out and buy a brand new bottle of. There's like one store in New Brunswick that still sells new bottles of uh, Rochefort 10, and I think they're like seven forty nine. So yeah, slightly more than the eight. Yeah. Okay. I paid and, uh, five pound, five pound fifteen. And you paid what was it for the ten for what for it? Uh, for four ten, four ten for the eight, and five fifteen for the, uh, the ten. Yeah, so that, that's quid, right? Yeah, pounds. Yeah, pound quid. Yeah, same. Uh, it's. Which, it's not bad, but if I was in a bar, I'd be paying like six, seven pounds a bowl. Based on Ontario prices, too, it looks like they're paying like 40, 30 to 50 cents extra for the 10 compared to the eight as well, I believe. Um, so I'll read the comments and then we'll do the call. All right. Uh, we have where did I leave off? Oh, uh, Eric Gilbert just says, Oh, shit, the zodiac just showed up. He's all about Abby Pobo Zodiac, so I don't know. Jake says, random question. I recently came across a really old can of Iron City beer. The can says 1995. Should I drink it? Yeah. And then Jump everybody, in. Redbeard says, do that right now. Eric Gilbert says, yes. Sure. Joe Ganzel says, shock on it, ill-advised. Yeah. Eric Gilbert says, and drink the leftovers at the bottom of the can, too. And then Jake just has an emoji of uh, <laughs> which... Uh, and then Eric <laughs> Red Pierce says, roll that trub. And then Eric Gilbert says, Coy! Backwoods Billy Craft Beer uh, review shows up and has all the emojis and says, hey, guys, what's up, Billy? Uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, Redbeard says, after chat happening somewhere, I'm going to need you to sell not Redbeard, but probably, yeah. We'll talk about it at the end. Just just get it under control, buddy. Just get it under control. Uh, Todd, <laughs> Todd says, cheers, guys. A little late to the party. What's up, Todd? Cheers. Uh, cheers, everyone. Jetsy says, do they make a trip out, aka a triple? I do not believe that. I've seen one here. They may. I don't think so, though. I do not think they make a triple. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, nope. And then Redbeard says, put down the bottle caps. Nick actually says, put the bottle caps down. Caps for down, Nick. So he's a... Yeah, you can hear me playing around with the caps on the table. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't say anything because you know we just assumed you know you would put them down at some point, but you didn't. Whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, all right, Kubi. So I have pretty much the exact Ooh. same. Result. Uh, I'm gonna pour the eight into the ten. Why? I have no, I have no rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna do it. So it's Kubi time, baby. Kubi, Kubi, is that the Kubi? Poured it. Here we go. Let me know how it is. Oh boy. What do we do? Craig, you can't come on to the business call with the Kobe and not do a call. Did you, wait, wait, did you drink it all already? No, I'm, you, I'm joking. So. 
fuck around. <laughs> Craig, you can't fuck around about the poop, okay? There's no, there's a lot of jokes happening here. Dad jokes, fucking all kinds of crazy bad jokes that I won't repeat. But you can't fuck around with the COVID. The COVID's fucking serious business. The COVID, the COVID, the COVID. And remember, if you ever come on a beer review with Joe, you have to do the COVID. I mean, we do the Sam Adams. Oh, I'm, 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 fucking New England Sam seventy six. So too bad. It's just happening. Look carefully. Here we go. All right, here we go. You did it. COVID, COVID. Oh yeah, Craig. Approved. Craig's making some kind of fucking mixed drink. He's not cool, and it seems like he's you know he's, he's pouring remnants of seven different beers into his. Anyway, I've got a double double cuvee, yeah. Oh baby, cool. All right, so that's a little bit darker than the eight, but not as dark as the ten, which you would expect from a beer half, you know, mixed fifty fifty with one another. Right, right. Who cares about the color? What is this? Little Rochefort nine. Uh, it looks like a Belgian beer. Yeah, so. it doesn't. Mm. Still, still get that very brownish mahogany kind of like hazy kind of look yeah. to it. Looks still looks yeah. very nice. Yeah, we're on the uh, aroma. Okay. Fuck the fuck the uh, appearance right now. Fine. All right. Is it me or I'm getting a little <laughs> bit more booze out of this one? Yeah, that's booze. Oh, I'm getting fucking tons of dark fruits all of a sudden. I didn't get like a ton of dark fruits. Like some like each of you guys got in different. I'm getting all dark fruits. Like I'm also getting like, uh, uh, a little bit of like that apple that they said like apple pie. Like I'm getting like a red apple core thing going on too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'm dark getting fruits. Right. yeah. I'm getting a, like a perfumey booze hmm. to it. If that makes sense. Yeah, I get it's definitely the, perf definitely got that perfumey kind of booze. Yeah. That's a good way to put it, actually. I get that uh yeah I, yeah I get the i get the spice like the spices almost seem dialed back now for some reason even though they were pretty noticeable in the years before but now i, I get that that rich dark fruits a little bit of the apple pie bits of all spice i think it yeah. smelled better than the eight but not as good as the 10 because i think the 10 nose for me was fucking dynamite i know it's different different for you nick based on your bottles but for me it's better than the eight but not as good as the 10 aroma wise with all with all the what's going on and stuff it's, it's it's almost smelling like a rum to me yeah i can see that yeah okay i can see that i'm picking up what you're putting down craig i'm picking it up a little bit all right anyway i get it it's whatever it's fucking it smells yeah yeah it's a coffee it's fucking coffee let's Ooh. get it cheers everybody cheers cheers it's not bad but i don't like it more than either of the uh beers by themselves it's quite sweet for the front end. Wow. Yeah, it is. And that red apple core. I didn't like really get any red apple core. Got like the apple pie Nick was talking about earlier, but like not in that. I'm getting like a lot of red apple core. Mm. Not bad in the least. It's not bad. No, it's actually good. But like I individual beers are, are better. It's like taking the best of both worlds. There's some reason you get like a lot of the rich, deep fruit, like flavors of the 10. That oh, almost shit. Like almost earthy kind of demerara kind of sugar in the back, but it's so super drinkable now, like because it's going down super easy. Nick is having a pity. Yeah, this is like this is well, it's not like I would do buy two bottles of this to ever do this again, spe like specifically to pour them together. But well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking this is a great experience. So you're fucking liking it quite a bit, then. Mm. Oh well, yeah, never, I don't. I don't think I've ever um, cuvee these no. two beers sober. No. Well, I mean, we're sober now. I'm not fucking hammered. We're doing it because it's a show and we're doing a COVID. If we're not doing you are not living. No, no. It's, 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 it's science, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, scientific. For, for me, it's just it, the, the flavors kind of fall flat. Uh, Like, not like... Each each beer is quite unique. And when you mix them together like this into a coffee, I just feel like I'm losing what makes each of these beers you know, themselves, and um, it's not bad whatsoever. Like, if somebody handed it to me, it was like, here's just our Belgian strong dark, or here's, like, you know, Belgian dark beer, or whatever, I'd be like, oh, it's just fucking really good. Like, I enjoy it. Well, you yeah. give me the no, 8 or you give me the 10, I'm picking those every single day of the week over this. It's, it's really damn sweet. That's yeah, it is thing. somehow. Isn't that weird? How is that even mm. that weird? It's, it's definitely sweeter than them, both of them individually it's just like i don't know you, um, you said rum craig i'm getting like it's not really fucking soon i'm getting like almost brandy notes out of this one right, kind of okay. weird yeah kind of weird for me yeah, and, it, and it's still really fumey 
per perfumey, fumey kind of alcohol on the nose. I'm almost getting like, even now, like almost bordering yeah. on like a good rich, like between rum and scotch almost. <laughs> Fucking weird. I'm not, no, hammered, it's not like a smoky, hammered. officially Don't amateurs. No, I'm. Uh, I, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting. I'm not getting. I'm not getting scotch because I'm not a particular lover of scotch. So I'd, I'd pick that up. Technical difficulty. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah that was it's not like 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 a smoky whiskey. It's kind of like you get that the nice fruity flavors you get, and uh, combined with like a navy rum kind of thing. It's almost like a cuvee on the uh, on spirits. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like. It's almost like the um, you know, I, I can't, you know the um, uh, Halloween. You get these kind of coated uh, apples, it's, like it's, the it's caramel like, coated. Oh yeah, candy apple. Not candy caramel. Apple. You're, just saying, you're just saying straight candy apple, not caramel. Yeah, just just like um, yeah, it's, it's more of a kind of a toffee toffee apple maybe. And in the states, we got caramel, and they do candied as well, as far as I know. Yeah, but but that, that, yeah, that, that 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 kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I felt so rating on it. I'd give it like a high, like between a four and a four two five, like as just as a beer. I like it. I give it like a four point one, say something like that. It's a good beer. I I it, I mean, we I gave the other two four point five, so clearly I don't like it as much. I don't know. What you, you guys don't have to rate it, but I just do just to, just to prove like where prove a point or say this is where. It, sits for me so this is significantly worse than each of these beers for me but it's still a fucking very good beer like i'd have no problems drinking this i just after having the the high the high class uh beers that are roached for uh eight and ten i don't think i'd ever mix these again sober or no, not sober no. ever just because it's just they're no. meant to be drank separately no, no. So, I'll, I'll give it a four a four out of five yeah. that's right how about eight you out of ten. um I really like that. I, I I'm thinking, just like the Kuvi, I combine both ratings, 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 ratings from my eight and ten. I would say give us a four two five. Because I'm thinking if I was, if I was to drink this as a beer on its own, I would love that. Yeah, it's good. If I mean, that was a real beer. That's fucking really tasty. I, I like. I I don't think any of us can sit here and argue that's not a good beer. It's just after having those two, I just me personally, I'd not want to do get some beers Kuvi better than others. Ah, they do. They really do. Um, so we'll read the comments here and then finish up. We'll have plugs for people's channels. We'll have talk about what's going on in a couple weeks. All kinds of crazy shit. Sons. All right. Sons. Uh, we got a lot of comments and we had 15 people watching. So, uh, don't wow, know. Holy going. shit. I mean, I guess on a Monday night, it's just not much going on. So let's go see what the Beer Patrol's Terry Ballot and his friends have going on, which is usually jack shit. Anyway, Redbeard says, my Imperial Stout and Chocolate Milk Hoovy wins forever, which is the grossest fucking thing I've ever seen anyone do on a hangout last night. And it happened. It's disgusting. Nick, or was it, or was it Saturday night? It was Saturday night. Oh, that I did that long hangout in the middle. Yeah, it was Saturday night. I need the chocolate milk with the fucking. <laughs> oh, would Redbeard do drinking the chocolate milk at the end of the night after oh. a bunch of sours? No, he did it with the Imperial Stout. It, oh. yeah, out and he did it, and he's like, he's he was drinking out of, fucking, out of the out of the carton too. Oh, I missed that. I went to bed early, so. Yeah, no, you you missed fucking Redbeard. I I don't even know. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. So we're not. Uh, Jake says, <laughs> I will not be playing this one with smiley faces. Jake, you got to live a little, buddy. Just a little. Just a little. You can buy them again. Uh, Eric, Gil Gil uh, Eric Gilbert says, Craig is blending whiskeys over there. He did look like he was blending some kind of spirits going back and forth. I mean, Craig knows what's going on, except for he does, actually. I was going to say he doesn't, but he does. I mean, Craig's, Craig's just a good dude. Anyway, Ewer shows up to troll us. He says, uh, apple pie. Nick is high again. And then he says, great to see Craig's potato camera back online. And this has come from Taku Murray, who never shows his face. So, I mean, do you really take what he says seriously? Never. And also, Craig's Craig's camera quality is a lot better than it used to be, and it's fine. You are, it's way better than yours, which doesn't exist. Okay, so fuck you, buddy. And then he also says, "Kove <laughs> equals the fastest way to ruin two beers." Depends on the kofi. Yeah, depends on the result, indeed. Redbeard says, who is eating the core uh, cores of apples? Uh, when I say red apple core, I mean the apple that as you get closer to the core, it the flavor changes. It just does. Uh, apparently, yeah, it just well, doesn't happen. 
bit more intense. It's not so, uh, you know, yeah, a bit it, more refined almost. Yeah, it's definitely different. Then again, Redbeard, I'd imagine he doesn't. I mean, as an individual who mixes chocolate milk and imperial stouts, I probably doesn't drink apple or eat apples. He probably doesn't eat vegetables. He's, he seems like a meat and potatoes kind of guy. <laughs> um, oh. Ewart says no one in response to who's eating apple cores. Redbeard LOLs. Techobeer says full of shit. Redbeard says cheers, Ewart. And Ewart says cheers, bud. So somehow Ewart has formed a friendship in the comment section of this video with Redbeard, God help us all. That is, That's bizarre. yeah, that is quite the duo, pretty much the duo of pieces of shit. Anyway, Ewart says, Cheers, <laughs> bud. And then, uh, Ewart then says, Joe is wasted. No one does dumb shut. He says, Dumb shut, not dumb shit. Shut. Dumb shut. Like mixing two good beers to make one glass of nightmare. Beer. Well, I'm just not going to respond to that because, uh, if you know, if Redbeard was a true friend, he'd call you out on your terrible grammar. But Redbeard then says, Joe's wasted. Nick's high. The show is off the rails. Um, I'm feeling you're not wasted. Nick is also not wasted. And neither is Craig because we have not drank the complete bottles of these yet. Give it time. I mean, give me time anyway. Jake says, I've never seen Joe do a cuvee 100% sober. And you never will because every time I do a cuvee, it's usually I drank two beers and then I do it. That's just how it works. Um, Earth says, what's this concoction I keep hearing about? Cuvee? Question mark. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Some kind of crazy mixture. Uh, Jamie Basement here says, Joe is the new guy. Hashtag smooth. <laughs> smoothie. He does a smoothie instead of the smoothie. Then they said the cuvee. Yeah. Smoothie. That's a smoothie. I want to say smoothie. <laughs> yeah, cuvee, but I'm not going to. I just did. Jesse says, the core of the apple is full of seeds, which carries cyanide. <laughs> no, it doesn't. God damn it, Jesse. Anyway, maybe it does, though. Uh, you know. He picked me, 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 me to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Christ. Bad jokes all day long. Uh, Nick says both beers combined. Eric Miller says, who doesn't like Scott? Must be an alien. Uh, Ewan says, apple cores, rum, Scott, brandy, toffee, all the flavors of the rainbow. Skittles beer. Ewan is the worst fucking troll. Like, he's, he's just he's not even funny. Like, you're terrible at it. Just stop. Go to bed. You're fucking he's, getting, he's getting too old for proper trolling now. Yeah, he's just terrible. He, that's not even proper trolling. That's just terrible. Like he's there's guys that come like Eric Gilbert does a pretty good job most of the time. Like he can be hateful, but in like the best way possible. You were tries to be like Eric Gilbert, but he's just not as good. And it's just a, it's a shame. I don't, <laughs> and then you beat Eric or you meet Ewart in real life, and you're like, oh man, he's a good dude. And then you see him try to troll, and you're like, what a fucking idiot. Anyway, Jake says all beers are meant to be drank separately. I mean, that's up for debate. Colby. Eric Gilbert says it's kicking in. Ewart says Nick likes cuvee equals high as a kite. Like, does that even make any sense, Nick? But then beers join each other. Beers join each other in the stomach anyway, so we're just doing a cuvee before it gets there. That's true. Earth does say something proper. He says, "Oh, fail." Yeah, a little bit of a cuvee fail. It was. It, I, I, I mean, except for Nick. Nick apparently was loving it more than the Rochefort Eight. That's on his palate, though. I, I liked it somewhere between the date and the ten, just like Kuvi should be, because it's the combination of both beers. Yeah, One brings it and the other down. Tell him. Let, let, let all the hate yeah, out. He's thinking I'm high as a guy. I haven't tried anything since Redbeard's place. Oh, shit. See, fuck you, you shit, anyway. sons. Jesse says Nick's got the drunk bubbles coming up. <laughs> the shit bubbles next morning. Okay. Ooh, okay. You get the anal Kuvi. Okay. Redbeard says it was Whoa. so freaking tasty. I don't even know what it is. It's freaking tasty. Oh, the chocolate milk and the imperial stout, I'd imagine. Uh, Jake says, need I remind you how much I paid for these? That is true, Jake. But you got a coffee. You got a coffee, a little bit of coffee. Uh, Redbeard says, I take very large bites of apples. I guess the core flavor just mixes in. I don't think you eat apples. I think that's a complete and utter lie. Fabrication. Redbeard eating apples. Give me a break. He says, <laughs> trace super tiny amounts of cyanide, LOL. And then you were, we'll finish this uh, entire I guess a night off with a Ewart, two Ewart comments. He says, and I quote, fuck Eric Gilbert. And then he says, Nick, move your camera. I can't see Garfield. And then Redbeard, and then Redbeard says, Bird in hell. I think he's talking to Ewart. Their, their friendship has uh, resolved instantly, except for he's probably talking about us. In that case, fuck you, Redbeard. Um, anyway, yeah, so it was a fun time. We uh, we, uh, we compared the 8 and the 10. We did a fail holy, except for Nick, who likes it more than the 8, which is crazy, but his palate is a baby palate. It's kind of like, sure, sure. I don't know. I don't know. We're just evolving into nonsense. Anyway, so 
I want to thank everybody who stopped by. I think we had 16 watching was the highest point, which is nice. We consistently had 11 to 12 people watching all night long, which I, I mean, I appreciate all night long. I appreciate everybody, you know, watching the stream. Uh, like I said, these Monday night live beer reviews all about trying to get beers that most people can get at the very least in the States. But if we can do beers like this, where, you know, we have somebody from Canada, somebody from the UK and somebody from America all reviewing, I think that's pretty cool. We're getting everybody in. Um, so give shouts out to uh, Joe Ganzel, always shows up. Good dude. Jake as well. He's always here. Uh, you know, Paul from Pabrun who showed up and said cheers to us. I don't know if he's still watching. If he is, cheers to you, Paul. Eric Gilbert, shout out to him. Jesse, Bumpy Road Brewery will be on in a couple weeks for the Sam Adams, which we'll talk about momentarily. Shout out to Redbeard, even though he does not eat apples. He tells us he does. We really know this. True story, which is he doesn't. Shout out to Rajay over at Rajay Beer Ventures. Because if I didn't, he would be upset. I can't miss Nick in the comments because he's actually in the chat. So that's a positive. Shout out to Lee Russell uh, for showing up and saying, I see a bunch of traps on this panel right now. I still that's one of the best comments. Uh, shout out to Ewart, a.k.a. Tekken Murray, for, I guess, being himself, which is not really himself. It's an online persona. He's terrible at it. Um, who else? Earth showed up late. Appreciate him showing up. Uh, am I missing anybody else? I think that's pretty much it, right? Oh, Jamie Basement Beer, who came in to say, Smovey. Smovey, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, anyway, let we'll let these guys plug their channels and then we'll talk about what's happening in two weeks. So, Nick, what do you got going on in your channel? Anything in the near future, whatever you got? The um, well, anything in the near future? Well, two things, I suppose. One thing is, I'm doing uh, right currently this next week, I'm uploading old reviews from last year's Big Axe Beer Fest in preparation for me actually going to the Big Axe Beer Fest this coming month. I'm going to the Big Axe Beer Fest. In Natwick, New Brunswick, it's just above, like, uh, forty-five minutes above Fergton, up the St. John River Valley, mm -hmm. uh, which is an awesome festival. It's an open-air festival, kind of like the Albino Rhino Beer Fest, except for it's all New Brunswick craft beer. And actually, they've got like Anderson Craft Ales from Ontario is going to show up. I don't know. There's some weird, some weird coincidences. That I think it's like the main brewer from the Anderson Craft Ales used to work for Patiso in Edmonton, so they send some stuff down. We got. I forget what the brewery's name was, but we got another brewery coming in from Belgium. Like one of the Belgians actually sent over a couple pallets of this one beer that they got. Uh, I forget what the name of it is, but anyway, it's this open air festival, a really nice uh, environment. And uh, uh, as a, as a, as a thank you. And also as an in advance for taking pictures for them this year, they've, uh, they've given me a complimentary tickets. So I'm going up there on their dime. So as long as I, as long as I send them back photos, um, oh, boy. So, but that, that said, I'm going to go up there and enjoy myself. That's one thing that's going on lately. This, the other thing of course, is this week on uh, beer analysis 101, we're going to go look at uh, beer from great lakes brewing, which is pale Al, a brute pale ale that uh, Greg had given us uh, during the well and piss up. And uh, next week, well, I'll announce next week, but every Wednesday on my channel, which is Maxwell stars beer reviews. Uh, I do, a uh i do a, a live review show actually with sometimes joe comes on sometimes craig comes on and uh we'll do a one beer where I'll, we'll drink the same beer and we'll tell us everybody what we think of it or if we hated it or if we liked it as much as mgd fucking <laughs> mgd <laughs> don't ever bring that up on my fucking channel ever MGD that, was that was the worst beer analysis i've ever seen in my life without question not even there's not even a remote result. yeah everybody liked pbr and i hated that one Anyway, whatever. Anyway, I will be on Nick's channel this Wednesday for the Great Lakes uh, nice. Hell Al because uh, Greg snuck it in with, along with Cool Beer, which I drank and poured. All right, what's going on with uh, you, Craig? Anything going on? I, I know you have a lot going on. You actually posted a video recently, so yeah, I I done a kind of like you know awful kind of like live stuff recently just to put it out there. So I'm not going to bore everyone with that. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, Kent from Craig's Beer Reviews, and I'm doing this week. I'm doing actually a, a brewery showcase uh, for the first time. Uh, it's, it's I say it's a local brewery. It's just yeah, it's about about sixty miles down the road uh, on the south coast of the UK called Burning Sky. Um, it's my first time that I'm actually doing one beer from them every single day, as well as my normal reviews. So they're getting pushed back to the like, late afternoon. So it's going to be a lot of reviews this week. Um, possibly 15 reviews I'll be posting this week. So, uh, so yeah. But I've, 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 I've been doing preparations. So it's not as if I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, no, it's not 
nothing like that. Um, I don't think so. But, so not yeah. my reviews then? That's cool. I like it. Yeah, so it, they're going to be posted early, and then in the afternoon it's going to be my regular reviews because I don't want to stop. I can't stop, though. I just need to get them out there and sort of thing. So, But, yeah, it's going to be really good. Um, there's During the course of the next few months, I'm going to one or two uh, beer festivals, and I might do some uh, vlogging and a, a, a short, quick, sharp reviews at the festival while I'm sober kind of thing. Um, yeah. And doing that and just, just doing bits and pieces. And, yeah, just that's... Uh, the, the big festival I'm really looking forward to, though, is the uh, London Craft Beer Festival, um, which is the beginning of the beginning or the end. It's in August. I can't remember exactly the date. I think it's the beginning of August. So that's going to be really good. Um, there'll be collective arts will be there. Um, so it'll be oh, interesting yeah. to see what, what, what sort of stuff they bring. Um, and then various, like Firestone Walker and bits and bats. I think Barrier are going to be there and a few other things so trying some of these things on tap would be quite interesting um so yeah that's it yeah so uh yeah. like like i said um yeah check out nick's channel maxwell star is his channel name it's no longer maxwell star beer reviews it's actual just well, maxwell star. the channel's called maxwell star but the yep. beer review segment is all maxwell stars beer review in the with, channel is maxwell with star with s at the end of review but uh, nobody ever remembers that no, so. no, because that's dumb also it's maxwell <laughs> star up. it's just, it's just maxwell star just that's his channel craig's channel is kent beer reviews not not craig's beer reviews it's kent beer reviews and uh, both of them have really good content, uh, especially when Nick decides to post it. It's really awesome. Um, yeah. Anyway, so check <laughs> both, of these, both of these guys out because, yeah, I mean, I watch them as much as I can. Pretty much every review. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, so on my channel, uh, I'm going to have a review from Genesee. They're a lemon strawberry cream ale. So if anybody watched my review from this past week, I did Natter Days from Natural Light, which was their you know, basically strawberry lemonade beer. So Genesee is coming out, or has come out with a lemon strawberry cream ale. I don't know if it's kind of like you go head to head with them or whatever. I'll be reviewing that this week and posting it this week, hopefully. And then I think I might do a head to head between those two beers at some point. Aside click, from that, I click by click by click by click by click oh, by yes, <laughs> lemon <laughs> strawberry cream ale ever question mark. Um, but, uh, yeah, I post reviews every day, uh, every single day. You guys know this. Um, if you watch my channel, it's every day at 10 AM new, new, uh, review every Monday. Well, most Mondays, and here's where I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, next Monday, which is July 1st, Canada day, no live Monday beer review, not going to have a live review, not going to be live, but Monday, July 8th, I'm going to be joined by at this time, Nick and Jesse over at bumpy road. And we're going to be taking a look at uh, Boston Beer Company slash Samuel Adams, their New England style IPA, which has been out for a couple of years now. And their Sam 76, which I believe they released last year. Um, we're going to be doing those, both of those beers, mostly because Nick actually has access to them. He, they showed up in his, mm -hmm. uh, his a ANLBs, ANBLs, ANLBs, ANLB, ANBL. A and B L there. Because oh, it's like a <laughs> it's like a combination of the French and it, we're a bilingual province. We're the only uh -huh. bilingual province in Canada. So uh, but it's like Al Cool, New Brunswick or Nouveau Brunswick liquor. So okay. it's A N B L. A N B L. Okay. Yeah. It'd so, be liquor. Most people call it NB liquor around here, but it's called technically A and B L. Okay, so he uh, he can get both of those. Uh, Jesse obviously can, and most people in the states. Uh, hopefully, we'll sneak in another, maybe a couple other beer tubers. We'll see who else can grab them. If you can grab both of them, which I think most people can, feel free to do so. Drink along in the comments, kind of like Jake does. Awesome time. Listen to your guys' feedback on the beers that we're drinking as well. So, uh, yeah, that'll be again Monday, July eighth, two thousand and uh, you know twenty three. No, not really. Well, it's going to be two weeks from today. So be on the lookout for that. Um, also be on the lookout for a post show here momentarily. I don't know if it's going to be on Nick's channel. I don't know if it's going to be a Rod's channel. Someone's going to be doing a post show. So if you're subscribed to Nick and you're subscribed to Rod, hmm. keep your eye out. Or maybe even Redbeard. I don't know who's going to do it. Someone's going to yeah, either Rod, Redbeard, or me. I, I can do one if nobody else is doing one. But if anybody feels wants to feel free to do one tonight, go right ahead. Just putting that out there. And, and by the way, um, 
when Redbeard said, did he just say Kent from Craig's Beer Reviews? I did, and I did that on purpose. I'm doing it all night, Redbeard, you fucking moron. Craig, Craig said I'm it. Sorry. Craig, Craig introduced himself. like, hi, I'm Kent from Craig's Beer Reviews. Oh, oh, is that what he's talking about? Yeah. yeah. No, I was saying it too purposely. I've been also calling Craig Greg on purpose. This is a running joke, Redbeard, you dumbass. Jesus, he's so stupid. I love you, Redbeard. And then Earth says, yes, he did. He said, awesome. Wasted. Hammered. Right. Wasted. Z right. yeah. That's yeah. grandma. Red, red beard the funny thing about red beard is that like it's it's you know it's been a running joke for how long have we been doing this for at least six months maybe a year with craig that's just the whole thing i've saw it used to be lance lance the lush he would just be like oh, i'd like to thank uh kent from craig's beer reviews for showing up tonight he was just like <laughs> did you just say did you just say kent from craig's beer reviews is that did that just happen and well, red that, beard that says is, this is that, that, What's that, Craig? That's happened over here as well. That's that's uh, happened over here as well. So it's not, it's not new, um, new year, new year. New, <laughs> I can't, I can't even say it. How do you say it? What is I, going on with this water? I'm, I, I'm drinking water, and all of a sudden I'm getting drunk. The water. What? No, but uh, <laughs> Redbeard says, I wasn't here the whole time, asshole. Uh, Redbeard, you're friends with us for well over a year, and this has been a running joke. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. Redbeard. doesn't matter. It, it Too much matter. chocolate milk if we mix with fucking Imperial Stouts for Redbeard. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's... And then uh, Ewer says, one is a Slipknot, <laughs> Slipknot review. Uh, that's going to be on Nick's channel, right? Tell your album breakdown of Slipknot. Fuck, fuck you. No? Okay. Still anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going to actually shut this down. I, I I seriously thank everybody, even you were and everybody, and, and it's all love, except for... Even you. Yeah, even you were, even you were and Redbeard. It's all love. Uh, the biggest shout-out and love goes to Earth because he's our planet, and we got to keep him safe. We're all Earth-friendly here. And we're going to leave you with that. So thanks, to everybody, for stopping by another live Monday Night Beer Review. Once again, two weeks from now, Sammy Adams, New England Style IPA, Sam76. Be there. Or P-square. See ya.